Hello to everyone. And um, let me introduce you. Um, astrologer, Crystal Karina. Hello, Hi, Crystal. everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> me too. So, um, so let's start with the topic. And um, uh, you can see already the chart. I'm gonna let you talk in a minute. So the topic of today is skip steps, Venus skip steps. Can you tell us about this chart and all information? Yes, I can't wait to get into this chart. So as we promised, we said we were going to do a skip step video. Now um, we're going to look at Mr. Paulo Coelho's uh, natal chart. And um, we're going to be talking about Venus as a skip step, but not necessarily like a love romantic story. I kind of wanted to show you how Venus can also affect other types of love and creativity and um, money. So we're going to talk about that, even though he also has his own love story. But the main, main focus of Venus this time around affects um, other types of love, too. And then we could do another video about a real romantic type of like love. Like we'll talk about that later, because I know love is I mean, that's the biggest thing that um, humans thrive, thrive to have in their life, right? We all want love, some type of love, be loved. So that, that's going to be a video for next time. So this is Paulo Coelho. Uh, do, have you heard of him? Uh, yes, he's significant personality. And actually, my favorite uh, quote, what he usually said, uh, I repeat so many times, only these people who believe in magic, only to these people, magic can happen. Wow, that's so insightful. And his work is very magical. So his books are very magical. So he probably lives by this quote. And um, I mean, it totally speaks to his chart. So should I get into it? Should I talk about its chart? Oh, yes, sure, sure. It's like very lovely to, to hear about um, amazing men with all his spiritual insights. Please start. Yes. So the reason I chose this chart and um, we were looking for Venus skip steps in general. And I was searching a numerous amount of charts to find the Venus skip step. And this one just immediately caught my eye. First, when we talk about skip, skip steps, we look at the nodes because the nodes play, play a part in the skip step formula. So what a skip step is in evolutionary astrology is that a planet is squaring both the south node and the north node. And that planet, the meaning of that planet the placement of that planet and the archetype sign that that planet is in are areas that are coming from other lifetimes that the person needs to still continue to work on. So that's why they call it a skip step, meaning the evolutionary process or the soul of the person has skipped the lessons around that. Right. So then the, um, the person comes in with a like a soul contract of sorts or like a need to continue to work on these things right so in looking at his chart he actually has a bunch of planets that are technically considered a skip step so in order for a planet to be a skip step it needs to be um, either squaring the south and north node by a 10 degree orb some astrologers give it up to 17 degrees so even in this chart i would consider pluto a skip step saturn a skip step mercury a skip step and venus a skip step in addition to the sun and virgo even though the virgo, virgo sun is um, in a different sign 
it's still mm -hmm. considered a skip step. So um, now the Virgo sun, because there's a, also a way to see if the soul has resolved or will resolve or create new karma. So with the sun, the sun already passed the point of the square. So in this time, in this lifetime, he needs to heal the karma that he's had with the father line and also with his life purpose and career because the sun represents all that it's going to represent our father it's going to represent our life purpose and this is why it's connected to the career because it's a burning desire that we have right to achieve this and that's another big thing when we talk about love that's like a priority in humankind and we also talk about life purpose because all of us want to know our purpose. Like, what's the purpose of my life? What is it that I'm meant to do, right? This is like one of the top questions that we have as human beings. So in his chart, he came in with this energy to fulfill his purpose because the sun already passed it. But Venus is the one that gets the most injury. Venus is exactly at 27 degrees. So the north and south node, again, the same 27 degrees. And um venus in the 27th degree according to nikola stajanovich's degree theory that is the energy of gemini and venus represents love mm -hmm. venus represents money art all sorts of art venus rules um like visual arts it rules dance it rules music it also rules poetry along with the energy of Gemini because Mercury rules the written word and speech. Mm -hmm. So we also have Mercury there at 25 degrees. So even making this additional emphasis on um, creative writing on um, as an art, right? Writing is an art, but it's a different type of art. We don't see it as like a Picasso, but this is a verbal art like poetry. Um, we also see Saturn there and Pluto and Pluto's already an evolutionary point. So we know that. So then it becomes intensified and this personality came in with a lot of intensity. Now, a little bit about, about his backstory. First, you can see the sun and the moon squaring. So whenever the sun and the moon square, which is the father energy and the mother energy, there is intensity in the, har the harmony of the sun and the moon in the person's chart. And it usually shows up with the parents. Now his story, he was brought up very, very uh, traditional Catholic. And he went to private school in which his parents were instilling education. And the energy of Sagittarius and Virgo, even Pisces and Gemini, they're focused on education. They, that's the um, information axis. So Virgo likes to see all the little tiny details of information. Sagittarius likes to see the big picture, like it rules libraries and knowledge and philosophies. So this was really instilled in his family. Education was something that they prioritized in the family for their children to have success. However, he rebelled against his parents. And when he was in his late teens, he started, you know, doing drugs and just, you know, being kind of like a normal teenager, like just kind of disagreeing with the strict religious upbringing that he had because his parents didn't agree with him being a writer, even though. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you? Yes. Uh, can you please tell us uh, how you did find out what uh, he go against his parents? Yes. So when we look at the, the the aspect of the moon and the sun, it's a square. So that's the first thing. And that's energy of Mars. So it's to fight. Right. So he's either going to have parents that are disagreeing with each other or these parents are kind of going to attack him. So they'll mm -hmm. disagree with his value system and Venus's value system. Mm -hmm. Venus is the stuff that you love, mm -hmm. how you love. So even though Venus in the sign of Libra, I'm sorry, not Libra, uh, Leo is not squaring, it's still being affected by an out of orb square. But the main one here is the sun in Virgo, 
and the moon in Sagittarius. Additionally, he also has Neptune in the fifth house in the sign of Libra, which Venus rules Libra. And Venus also rules his ascendant, which is um, Taurus. And Venus oh. ruling the cusp of the, the uh, fourth house and the cusp of the 10th house, which is career and status, mother and father. So it's that traditional lineage of the uh, family line. And according to Nicola's theory, the two degree is ruled by Venus because it's correlated to Taurus. So then yeah. I'm looking at all these little things and I'm seeing how everything's playing out in his chart. So um, his backstory, like I mentioned, his parents disagreed with his value. So then he rebelled and the rebellion comes with Neptune in the fifth in the sign of Libra because it's already being ruled by a skip step planet. And it's getting a trine, I'm sorry, not a trine, a square, a square. There's a trine to Uranus. I'll talk about that later. A square to Neptune. And Neptune and Mars together talk about the spiritual warrior. So what did he do? Because it's a square, he's disagreeing with his childhood upbringing. The fifth house is connected to children. It's connected to hobbies. It's connected to art, the stuff that we love. It's a Dharma house. So um, he had lessons to learn around this Dharma energy, especially because it's being ruled by Libra and Venus is in a skip step position. So mm -hmm. his early upbringing, even though he rebelled against it, he needed to experience that to really shape and form the person that he is now. But he didn't see that back then. Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask? Uh, so when uh, Neptune in the fifth house, so that it can tell about uh, his childhood, that he was like already spiritual or um, what, what it's representing the fifth house, can you say? So yes, I can talk about Neptune in the fifth. So um, when we have Neptune in the fifth, it really influences us in regard to our, our the way that we love. It's, it's a romantic house in every shape or form. It also talks about spirituality. So Neptune in the fifth, people usually come in with a lot of spiritual experience and it ends up being good Dharma because this is a Dharma house. It's a good house. However, when we see aspects to Neptune from the fifth house, like just say we have a lot of positive aspects, the Dharma is really easy for us to access. But when there's squares, which he has a square, it's a little harder. So he came in with this um, spiritual knowledge and it's not it wasn't just limited to his upbringing he had a broader perspective and this is why he had a problem with his upbringing because even though the parents placed him in a spiritual institution to learn um he had more of that sagittarian broad view and you can see it also by the nine degree of neptune and sagittarius because sagittarius is energy of collecting belief systems not just one but all the belief systems. It's the library of belief systems. So this can be religion uh, with like Judeo-Christian or it can be from um, Indian, like, like Vedic beliefs. So it doesn't matter, it collects belief systems. So he was um, conformed by his family to only value one belief system. And he came in with such spiritual urge to just expand to more and that's where that energy of mars mars being in the sign of cancer cancer representing the family so it's coming from the family like no you have to follow our belief systems these are our values it's in the second house of values for him so these are values that the family instilled but he was his own person that wanted to create his own set of values so um, that's why he ended up rebelling against his upbringing in his early teens. Like I mentioned, um, that's when the parents placed him in a mental institution. And he's a very evolved soul. 
in in his interviews and he's mentioned it often that he forgives his parents for this and that takes a very evolved person and as you can see his look you know what what, what energy do you sense by his look right it's very deep but still soft at the same time this is why i chose this picture i really love this picture it really just um, and sturdy, you know, he has his hands like a Taurus. So it's like sturdy, a lot, a lot of Venusian energy, but still you know, wisdom. Yes, with wisdom, right? With uh, in a slight deep, intensity, very deep uh, spiritual wisdom. Yes, yes, very deep spiritual wisdom, um, and that's also a representative of his nodes because he has a south node in Scorpio, which is associated with the cold, with esoteric knowledge, with secret knowledge. So he came, comes in with that talent. And then his north node exact conjunct the Pleiades. So he comes in with, uh, yes, I know. And it's all correlated to the energy of Venus. So the... Um, the energies in his planet that are ruling the south i'm sorry the north and south node are venus and mars and mars is not in the skip step but mars is in a venus house the second house is the house of venus so when you look further into people's chart and you really start analyzing the subtle nuances you start seeing that this venus played a big part it's a skip step. It's next to Pluto. We already know that's the point of evolution, right? And we have to go to the polarity point. So um, a lot of things are just being ruled by this Venus. So he had this deep passion to just do what he loved. And again, Venus rules love. So it represents um, that sensual, soft, creative energy. But Venus also rules um, beauty rules romance obviously we know that rules money rules art so it rules a lot of our value systems so if you have venus skip step you're here to express your value system but you struggle at first because you're learning and within a skip step it's usually something we didn't finish in another lifetime what's well, not usually it is it's something we didn't finish in another lifetime and he had a lot of things that you know are affecting that point but venus much more strongly now the nodes are connected to the moon and these are the north nodes connected to the conscious actions we're going to take in this lifetime which is venus meaning it's unlocking maybe if he had the north node in scorpio and the south node in taurus he would have struggled more but he had it just perfectly for him to just continue against all odds because he was placed in a mental institution by his parents he struggled to find his purpose he became a uh, writer for the theater he then became a music writer um, again venus connected to the arts and music and mercury connected to writing and speech and lyrics right so he did all these things and he then got he got placed in jail because of his lyrics because of his spiritual position and what he communicated in his music so he had a real real long journey but he still followed it his drive to continue to express himself in a creative Venusian fashion was just so incredible. He kept going and going and going, which I think this is what gave him liberation to really express this Venus skip step. So he's resolved it. You now, eventually he published a bunch of books and one of them being The Alchemist, which is one of my favorite books. Um, and another one, the um, pilgrimage, um, mm -hmm. the, you know, so it, it, they're all about finding your purpose. Then eventually he did create some books or publish some books about his journey and his struggles. But um, just listening to his words and the message that he delivers in his books, you can really feel the Venusian poetry and passion. Right. You can feel it. 
but it, it it wasn't something that was accepted at the beginning his his parents went against it and you can see it by the square they wanted him to be educated it's not that they didn't love him they really truly believed that the career that he chose for himself was not something that was going to give him abundance and security and prosperity you know so they were so against that and they thought he was going crazy but he wasn't he was just rebelling expressing his um mars and cancer which can cause suppressed emotions and also um explosive emotions when it's not communicated mm -hmm. correctly so his chart very very like expressive and beautiful and this with this stadium in the third house the third house is communicated to i mean connected to speech and our communication system so he needed to output and actually speak up this time around what i picked up based on all the outlay of the chart is um he's had a lot of past lives especially the most recent one where he was like shut for his beliefs and mm -hmm. um the energy of scorpio south node uh, unfortunately does bring traumatic circumstances so mm -hmm. it could be that um his teachings were not accepted and mm -hmm. he was killed like like he didn't get to deliver his entire message in that lifetime so then he inc incarnated in a lifetime where he needed to finish the job which is a skip step but a bunch of them pluto giving that him the drive right the internal drive and passion to seek like giving him that power to continue to seek his truth saturn bringing blockages but saturn is another point where we work out some karma mercury the written word and venus the creative expression and also the love that he received because i, I mean for your parents to put you in a mental institution that's painful especially when you were not you were you didn't have a diagnosis right that required that i have a question mm -hmm. uh can you tell us about that chiron yes so chiron in the sixth house is going to influence um the work that you do and your daily work now Chi chiron is a wounded healer so here in this lifetime, he needed to first heal himself so he can heal other people. And um, it is with a south node. So again, it's far, but it's in the same house. It's influencing that he is meant to heal people with his words. But Chiron's also in the fourth degree. So that's correlated to cancer, which is the energy of the mother. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's um, forming a um, trine to Mars in Cancer. But Chiron mm -hmm. in Scorpio is allowing um, Mars to access the energy of Scorpio instead of only accessing that Cancer energy, which makes Mars debilitated. Now, where the issues came about the most are with the mother so the mother is the one that had most of this high expectation of his child so there the sixth house is also a karmic house this is a karmic work that we're meant to do so he knew if he went into positions to be a engineer he wasn't going to be a healer that way he knew his soul knew this his soul his soul knew that if he went to a position to be an attorney, even though Jupiter rules attorneys, but Jupiter, any planets to the south node are energies we already did. So we can bring in those talents, but if we stay in that same energy, we're not evolving to the north node, right? So he couldn't be an attorney because that it's in the sign of Scorpio. So it needs some type of esoteric energy, some type of deep transformation, psychological transformation. So he enrolled in um, school to be an attorney. He dropped out because his soul knew he was not going to be a healer that way. But 
He can be a healer with the written word. He can be a healer with how he expressed himself. And that's where that Chiron comes in. Now, like I said, Chiron is trining Mars. So it activates that Mars squaring Neptune at the same time. So that's where the main struggle is. But as he healed himself and he truly healed the relationship he had with his parents, everything started to just fall into place for him. Mm -hmm. So he had to forgive his parents for doing this, mm -hmm. right? His moon is also in the fifth degree. And the yeah. fifth degree represents the energy of Leo, which is the father. So the, through the energy of the moon, the father is also being expressed. And it's in the seventh mm -hmm. house, you know, so it, it, it's, it's... It's based on uh, Nikola Stojanovic's secret degree? Yes, this is based on the secret degree of Nikola. Mm -hmm. Can I have a quick question? Yes. Um, based on his uh, Neptune, mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Is it possible what his mother built his uh, spiritual, intuitive thing? Ba so, yes. So, um, based on Neptune, the moon is making a sextile to Neptune. So, the mother was the main responsible for the upbringing of the children. You can see that. And it's not just him. It's the third house is siblings. So it's also siblings that it was influencing, right? So the mo the mo that that was the mother's decision. The mother placed them in these. I mean, obviously the father is also in agreement, and you can see because the, the son is very involved. But the mother is the one that instilled these values in in him to be spiritual. So even though in the beginning he didn't feel like this is a type of spirituality that he wanted to express he found himself and with that foundation that his mother gave him he was able to evolve his belief system so he's even said it before that when he was little he hated going to mass he hated doing prayers and now it's something that he loves but he had to truly find it himself so the cards were there the the contracts of all the people we incarnated with they were there for him but he was not evolved enough at that time to see the real big plan right it was he needed to go through this pilgrimage for him to really discover himself and it's through that written word through that passionate drive that he had to um communicate himself and he really did reach his polarity point because his polarity point is where he has his part of fortune at 22 degrees, which that's another degree that it's either me or you, right? Uh, so it gives a person a lot, a lot of drive because these are very determined people. Um, it's They know there's only one way. So it's either going to be my way or it's going to be your way but there's only one way. So they really push hard and they can be victims or they can choose not to be victims, right? So, yeah, especially his success, uh, that 22 degree, it show how it can be expensive. Yes, and it's the part of fortune, which the part of fortune is a calculation of his um, ascendant, his moon placement and his sun. And his ascendant is really, really dominant because he has his north node there. So he came here to really fulfill his purpose this time around. But we know our north node is a tough place for us to achieve early in life. And once we do achieve it, our job is done. So what happens to us? Bye-bye, right? We're done with the life. We achieve the purpose of the north node and... That's it. So the North Node is a point where we keep working and working and working until we're ready to call it quits and say, okay, I'm done with this lifetime. I achieved my purpose. And this is why it's hard because um, we continue to work on lessons of the North Node over and over mm -hmm. and over, right? But with him, his part of fortune also kind of having that energy of the North Node because not everyone has the North Node conjunct their ascendant, right? Um, the part of fortune brings in his purpose too. 
So it's pulling in his purpose. And it's the polarity point of Pluto. It's in the ninth house of publishing, of international, of belief systems. So what did he do? His book is published in over his books, not book. Books are published in over 50 languages. The energy of Gemini and Sagittarius rule languages. So when I look at his chart, even though he's had a different type of traumatic upbringing, not the traditional where, you, you know, you get your parents that are very suppressive. They were suppressive in a different way. Um, he kept pushing and pushing because he needed to get his message out. His poetry out. His magic. Say his quote again. His magic. What was his quote? Yeah. No. The magic can happen only to these people who believe in magic, who believe what magic exists. Right. It's like so written in the stars for him. And Pluto rules magic. It's a natural ruler of Scorpio. So rules the occult. And he also dabbled in that. Um, he, ha he had a spiritual teacher. He's never re revealed who his spiritual teacher was. He met, met his spiritual teacher in a foreign country. He was in Germany. He's from Brazil. So again, mm -hmm. the polarity point of Pluto. Foreign country. Part of fortune. Yes, where his part of fortune was. Meaning this person actually... Changed his life. Yes, yes. Can you please tell us about um, his 12th house? I'm waiting for his yeah. <laughs> Yes. So his 12th house is quite interesting because he was born at the later degrees of Taurus. So in Placidus, which is the natural uh, layout for evolutionary ast astrology, even though I use both, I use Placidus and whole signs. That's the mix that I, that I use. Um, but in Placidus, his North node actually falls into the 12th house. And he also has another point there, which is asteroid series. And series is connected to the harvest. So it's like the harvest of life. It's the abundance that we are going to attain in our lifetime. But series also has a very painful mythology to her. She was the great mother that had her daughter taken away by Pluto. So bringing in that lesson of Pluto again. And Pluto is actually squaring this energy because Pluto from Leo squares the energy of Taurus. So Pluto wow. and, um, yeah, Pluto and um, Ceres are not, they're, they're actually in a square. And it's it's an applying square. It's about, hmm, how many degrees? A five degree orb. So it would be an applying square. Where then he had lessons around magic. And he he's also had lifetimes with lessons around magic. Because the 12th house is our past lifetimes. So whenever we have things there, these are some subconscious talents that we come in with. Right? And it's series. So it's an energy of abundance in the 8th degree, which is the degree of um the occult right it's a it's a scorpio degree it's a degree of black magic and we did do a video on that so you guys can check that out we'll make sure to link it so you can listen to that um now sirius is not a major planet but in his chart you can see that the pleiadian influence series in the eight degrees in the 12th house really um show and and the south node in, in scorpio really show his passion for magic it's he's had so he dabbled with black magic and this mentor that he found really led him let him uh led his way to mm -hmm. light so he still practices magic but it's in light versus when yeah. he was lost in and rebellious mm -hmm. can you tell us, please, did this Chiron have any impact on his 12th house? Yeah, definitely. It's in opposition. So it's a polarity point. And it's also in opposition to Ceres. So Chiron's at four degrees, Ceres is at eight. So he came to heal that. He healed himself. He came to make different choices. 
right? In past lives, he might have been doing some dark choices. And in this lifetime, it's like, no, 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 let's do this over again. Yeah. So, so the soul would like to review and relearn yes. in, in a more positive, spiritual way, not that these are cool, um, some another knowledge, more light, enlightenment. Exactly. Not dark, but light. Not constricting, but liberating. And um, if you look in his chart, so um, you can tell us how we would know what he was meant to be famous. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's so um, there's a few points, but I'm going to bring in the Nikola Stojanovic um, point, which is okay, the, degree, mm -hmm, the two degree of Taurus. So he finds the two degree in Taurus with people that first they're absolutely venusian and charming because two degree connects to that but also venus attracts money and it makes people royal so even though he wasn't born royal he's actually royalty in the brazilian publishing industry he's the top writer in his country mm, Yes, so it brings abundance. It's the cusp of his 10th house. And you cannot leave the credit behind to his upbringing, which is a Virgo energy. And Vir Virgo rules, um, it's ruled by Mercury. So still associated with learning and processes, right? Um, but his upbringing kind of set him up for that. So that's the first indicator that we see there. Another one is the second degree of Pisces is connected to Archangel Gabriel, which is also very artistic. That's a very artistic point. And the sun in zero degrees. So between for his age, Regulus was probably at 28 degrees. So near his um, Venus and his sun, like right in the middle of them. And that's the Archangel uh, Raphael. So coming in with that angelic energy and Archangel Uriel actually is um, very close to his moon. He sits at nine degrees. So he brings in a lot of power positions subconsciously than the Pleiadian <laughs> energy. So, I mean, even though he doesn't have the traditional layout where um, a lot of famous people will have their sun really high in the top part of the chart. He has a lot of key points in his chart that are going to bring in this fame. And then obviously the most obvious is Leo energy. That's already there, right? That's the king. So he already came in with, I'm the big boss in this energy. He has Pluto there. He has Saturn there. He has Mercury and Venus, and that's royalty. So, I mean, there is no way. That's a stadium. It's a concentration of energy. But it did happen later on in his life. Why? Because when we have a lot of planets on the top, we see more success early on in life. When we have planets hidden, we see this after, like in our later part of our life. Like, so I want to say between 35 to 45, you'll start seeing some um, leaps and bounds. And your career tends to, um, like, just climb, like, push, like, fast. Because the first part of your life, you were learning lessons that are then going to help you later on in life. So it does bring a little bit more karma. Because obviously, when we're learning lessons, those are tough lessons. But as long as you did what you're supposed to do and you learn these lessons and not just learn them, but really embrace the message of the lessons, then everything unlocks. And that's where you see a lot of the career success, which is also following his pattern with um, his career, like his writing career didn't take off until after. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It, it like, it just like his chart, uh, we can, uh, dig it dig it more and more and anyway thank you like it, it's like so amazing like i just 
any way what you look, even his karmic thing, and all his um, uh, third house. It's just like anywhere where you can pick, you can you can see so many. It was so interesting. Yes, you can see so many things. Uh, and and his chart has a lot of karma already because we see the nodes conjunct his AC and DC. But it's so, it wasn't karma that he was going to live with. It's karma that started at the beginning and he was able to resolve. Because you don't see a lot of planets in the fourth. The fourth is a very karmic house. You don't see planets in the eighth. You only see Lilith and Lilith is pretty intense, but it's only, you know, it's an ass. It's a point. It's a point. So it's not like the sun there. And you also don't see a lot of planets in the 12th. It's another asteroid. So he did come in with a little bit of karma with that goddess energy, but it's not like his sun or moon was there. He was able to really release it all. So it's just mm -hmm. a very beautiful chart. And mm -hmm. I wanted to mention this. He recently had the eclipse, the lunar eclipse, right mm -hmm. on his north and south node. So mm -hmm. we had an eclipse a few weeks ago. The sun was at 27 degrees in Scorpio, which is the descendant. Mm -hmm. And the moon was at 27 degrees in Taurus which wow. is out in his ascendant. So there's something going on with him. He's most likely going to come out with either a film or something because um, Mercury, not Mercury, I'm sorry. Um, Neptune is in Pisces right now. So Neptune was actually um, aspecting the nodes and Neptune being in Pisces in the 10th house, Neptune rules the film industry. It also wow. goes arts. So, I mean, I don't know, but that's what I'm guessing. Um, I'm thinking some developments of, around that. Jupiter is yeah. a point that traditionally rules film and arts because Jupiter is a traditional ruler of Pisces energy. So it was also triggered by the, um, the eclipse there. And it's at the 19th degree, your favorite degree, right? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I, it's almost like the God help him. Yes, yes. And, and that's what that degree represents, right? Like um, divine protection. Yes. Divine yes. help. Mm -hmm. Look, yeah, really. Wow, thank you so much. I hope you and, guys enjoyed this. Oh, I, yes, yes, of course. I just want to ask, um, can you please... Uh, um guys leave the comments please um any insights uh, can you please um any any comments please because this is kind of what kind of chart it's just like so so much to say you just reveal scratch the story but a beautiful beautiful Thank you so much, uh, Karina. I am um, uh, Crystal. Yes. Karina, I love it to be with you, and I, I always, to be honest, <laughs> I always fascinate about how talented you can combine with the different knowledge, with uh, different um, uh, knowledge, and put up together reading the chart it's so interesting because i i don't know who else do as much as you and make it like so nice and juicy thank uh, you for your deep knowledge and thank you for that love what you have for astrology and i forgot uh, to introduce me like usually it's anyway it's not about me but i'm uh, adelina sky I am all about hypnosis. I love the past life, the regression. And anyway, thank you so much. Lots of love to all of you. Thank you for your attention. Leave the comments. Lots of love and kisses. And let us know if there's anyone else's chart that you want us to 
um, interpret. And then we try to choose charts that have um, very unique aspects that, that can help. Oh. So, you know, so if you want to put it in the comments, let us know and we'll make sure to put it on our list because we have a list of, of talks that we have um, set up for you guys. So don't forget to follow us. Give us that like. Hit yeah, thank you. <laughs> Leave some comments. Yes. Thank you, Crystal Karina. Thank you for that beautiful, enjoyable time. Thank you so much, darling. Thank you, Charles. Bye.